we're going to take what we did the last two sections and talk about what it looks like when you draw their shapes, when you put them in a graph. So 11.3 is about shapes of distributions. Now I'm going to tell you that there's quite a bit of notes. So my suggestion would be to take screenshots, put them in Google Drive, so otherwise you're going to be writing quite a bit down. So what are you going to learn today? You're going to learn how to describe the shapes of data distributions. You're going to use the shapes of data distributions to choose appropriate measures, and you're going to compare data distributions. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is describing the shapes of data distributions. Recall that a histogram is a bar graph that shows the frequency of data values in intervals of the same size. A histogram is another useful data display that shows the shape of distribution. Histograms are, are a bar graph. So here we go. This dotted line kind of helps you understand the curve of these bar graphs. So this part right here is called the tail. That's like if this, for example, is like a fish, and it, this is the head of the fish, this is the tail. The tail of this graph extends to the left, so therefore this data is skewed left. Most of the data is on the right side. Here, the data on the right of the distribution is approximately a mirror image of the data on the left of the distribution. Therefore, this graph is symmetric. And here, most of the data is on the left, therefore this is skewed right. Most of the data, as I just said, is on the left. In example one, we're going to describe the shape of a problem. Now the frequency table right here shows the number of raffle tickets sold by students in your grade. Display the data in a histogram and describe its shape. So here's all of our data. We are now going to put it into a bar graph, into a histogram. And here's what it'd look like if we graphed it. Once again, the y-axis will always be frequency, the number of times something happens, and the bottom represents the range here of number of tickets sold, each of these ranges. So all we do is we make a bar graph, and we, like 1 through 8, 5 was the frequency, so we graph a bar up to 5, and then so on and so forth. So we have to describe the shape. Well, if you did put that line in here, the data on the right is approximately a mirrored image, therefore this distribution is symmetric. That's it. Now, choosing appropriate measures. Use the shape of a distribution to choose the most appropriate measure of center and measure of variation to describe the data set. So, when it's symmetric, here's the great news. When it's symmetric, you're just going to say you're going to use the mean to describe the center. If it's a standard, um, I'm sorry, if it's symmetric, you're also going to use standard deviation to describe the variation. When the data is skewed, either to the left or to the right, you're going to use the median to describe the center, and you're going to use the five-number summary. Remember, that's a box and whisker plot. The five-number summary to describe the variation. So here's your study tip. When a distribution is symmetric, the mean and median are about the same. When a distribution is skewed, the mean will be in the direction in which the distribution is skewed, while the median will be less affected. So here, for example, the mean has been skewed left because most of the data occurs over here, but it's skewed left because of this data, and this graph is skewed left. All right, example two, choosing appropriate measures. A police officer measures the speed in miles per hour of 30 motorists. So here's all their speeds. The results are shown in this table. A, display the data in a histogram using six intervals beginning with 31 to 35. Now before we do anything else, we're just gonna do A. That means 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. That means we're gonna go in intervals of five. So we would go 31 to 35, 36 to 40, 41 to 45. So here, if we put it as a frequency table to show the intervals, it would look like this. Here's our frequency table. From 31 to 35, that's only happened once. 46 to 40, I'm um, 36 to 40, happened three times. And we graph those. 
pretty easy to graph and make a frequency table. So this shows the speed of miles per hour in all intervals of five and the frequency. B asks which measures of center and variation best represent the data. All you do first is look to see what's happening here. So we draw our line. Well, it's skewed left. Well, if you look back at what you just wrote down in your core concept, if it's skewed, what are you going to use? Since it's skewed, you're going to use the median to describe the center, and you're going to use the five number summary to describe the variation. And part C says the speed limit is 45 miles per hour. How would you interpret these results? Well, here's 45 right in here. So how would you interpret the results? Most motorists are speeding. So by looking at this chart, it looks like most of the people driving are speeding. So in example number three, emoticons are graphic symbols that represent facial expressions. They are used to convey a person's mood in a text message. The double histogram shows the distributions of emoticons, messages sent by a group of female students and a group of male students during week one. Compare the distributions using their shapes and appropriate measures of center of variation. So here's our wonderful emoticon. So all we want to do is look at this and say, here are the frequencies of female students sending emoticon messages and male students sending emoticon messages. We want to compare the distributions using their shapes and measures of center and variation. Let's start with the female students. Now this is a lot of work and a lot of writing, but I just want you to look at what we're looking at. Because the data on the right of the female students is approximately the same as the left, obviously we can just say it's symmetric. So you would say because it's symmetric, the mean and standard deviation best represent the distributions for female students. The mean would represent the centers, um, the measures of center, and the distribution would be best represented by the standard deviation because that shows variation. So now, now let's look at the male students. Because the male students, the tail of the graph extends to the right, the distribution here is skewed to the right. So we know then the median and five number summary best represent the distribution for male students. So if we look at the mean, the mean of the female data set is the mean right here is approximately 30 to 39 emoticons messages sent, while the median of the male set is what? It's about right here in the 10 to 19 interval. So typical female would send much more emoticons than a typical male student. The data for the female students is more variable. Now, before we go on, this sentence here talks about the mean, the measures of center. Remember, the measures of center is where it's in the center. Since the female was symmetric, we were talking about the mean. Since the male is skewed, we're talking about the median. Now, we have to talk about variation. So the data for female students is more variable than the data for male students. Why? Because this means that the use of emoticons differs more from one female student to the next. So most of the males are all grouped together. The females, there's a wider range. So it differs from one female student to the next. All right, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is something called a bell-shaped curve. I hear that a lot. For example, if you're a teacher, it's looked upon that most of your students would be in this range academically. You're going to have some that are low, some that are higher, but most of the students would be in the average range. That's what a bell-shaped curve talks about. It talks about that most of the stuff is in the center of whatever data you're looking at. Many real-life data sets have distributions that are bell-shaped and approximately symmetric about the mean. 
In a future course, you will study this type of distribution in detail. For now, we're just going to use the following rules so you can see how it would help you and how valuable it is within standard deviation and how it can be used as a measure of variation. So this is just something that you will not have to calculate, but you just have to right now assume as, tr as a rule or as true. 68% of the data will lie within one standard deviation of the mean. So if this is the mean, x bar, your deviation one bar this way, one bar this way, all of this dark blue region in here represents 68% of the data. 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. And data values that are more than two standard deviations from the mean are considered unusual. Because the data is symmetric, or because the data are symmetric, you can deduce that 34% of the data lie within one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right. We're going to look at this as our final example. Example four, let's compare data distributions. The table below shows results of a survey that asks men and women how many pairs of shoes they own. So here's all the data. Column for men, a column for women. A, make a double box and whisker plot that represents the data. Describe the shape of distribution. Now it tells you in this problem what the first quartile is, the median, the third quartile, and etc. So I'm just going to write the answer down. Here it is. The distribution for men is skewed to the right. The distribution, because it's, there's more on the right. The distribution for women is approximately, or it is, symmetric. The whiskers are the same length on both sides. So far, so good. Part B says, compare the number of shoes owned by men to the number of pairs of shoes owned by women. As you can see, women own more shoes. So here's what it says. The centers and spreads of the two data sets are quite different from each other. The mean for women is 14. If you look at the mean, it's 14. Men is 8. The mean for women is almost twice the median for men. And there is more variability in the number of pairs of shoes owned by women. So women have a farther range of what they own. Now part C says about how many of the women surveyed would you expect to own between 10 and 18 pairs of shoes? So I brought back this chart. We're going to have to look at standard deviation here. So assuming the symmetric distribution is bell-shaped, remember, we're using the data, you would know about 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, let's look here. What's the mean of women? The mean of women is 14. The standard deviation is 4. That means we go 4 to the left, that would be the 1 deviation, and 4 to the right. And if that doesn't make sense to you, just think of it this way. Here's 14. Since the standard deviation means 1 deviation is 4 units left, 4 units right. So that gives me my range. Whoops, that should be 10. That gives me my range of 10 to 18, which is what I want. So then what you would do is you look right here, which is how many women were surveyed. I want to know how many people are within this range. Well, 68% of the people should be within this range. Since there are 40 people times 68%, which would be 0.68, that would be approximately 27. So 27 women own between 10 to 18 pairs of shoes.